Well, it sure has been nice to have the home build finished. It's finally allowed us to get to some of those smaller but related projects. In this episode, we'll be finishing out our gray water system, and then we'll get to work on some of the landscaping around the house, removing trees and brush, and we also installed a weather station. One of the first little things that I wanted to do is install a pull-up bar. And we decided to go ahead and use this little shed that we have. It's going to be a multi-purpose structure. It's just a nice structure that's sitting out there close to the house that we can build things on. And I wanted to stay in shape now that I'm not building the house every day. I have a little more leisure time. So I built a pull-up bar and then also put some ropes on it so that I could do kind of reverse push-ups for the back muscles. So it's just nice to be able to stay in shape out here without going to the gym. Another thing that we wanted to attach to the shed was a clothesline. We hang most of our clothes right above the washer and dryer, but we needed somewhere to hang larger articles. And so this will work perfect for that. I can attach it to the shed on one side, and so now I'm just digging a hole for the other pole, and then I'll string a line in between the two. For the pole, I'm reusing one of the 4x4 treated lumber boards that we had used previously on our footer for the foundation. And I'm using some leftover extra cement here, so it didn't cost us anything out of pocket for this. Just using some supplies that we had on hand. I'm just pouring in cement, mixing in water as I go. I also put in some gravel and kind of mixed it all together in the hole. And then used a level to get the pole straight. And then I packed a level down and let it sit for a while to solidify before I put any strain on it. A couple of things that we did have to buy for this was a couple small pulleys from the hardware store. The line is attached pretty high on the shack side, and so I want to make it to where you could stand down on the low side and load everything from one location. And so that pulley allows you to just move the rope and load the line standing still. You don't have to carry your basket up and down the line, and it makes removal also easy also. You just put your basket down and move the line as you take the clothes off. Just pretty handy. Well, it's nice to have the clothesline up. The next thing I want to do is clear out all the bushes from this little area here. The water from our roof comes into this area and it'll be a perfect place for fruit trees. There's a lot of small little mesquite trees in this area, way more than it looks. There's probably at least 20 here and I have to dig them all up individually. I'm digging down below the level of the soil and cutting them off below ground and then backfilling over them. So it takes a good bit of time, but it'll be worth it to get this area cleared out and have a nice little fruit tree grove in here. Red is digging up a couple of small trees, mesquite trees. We're going to clear some of the mesquite trees that are a little too close to our septic. And we're going to plant a mimosa tree that we found on sale. So hopefully it'll survive the winter. So nice to be done with the house. Do a little landscape. Red just got the clothesline hung. The other day when we were in town, we found a mimosa tree that was 75% off. We loved the look of the mimosa tree, so we decided to grab it and plant it. But before we could do that, I had to clear the area a little bit, had a bunch of small mesquite bushes that I had to remove first. But I had been doing that in the other area anyway, so I brought the same tools over and cleared it out, and we got this planted. Hopefully this will grow into a big, beautiful tree. I finally decided exactly where we want our gray water to go. We want to plant a nice big shade tree, something that has the potential to get really big. Over on this side of the property, we want it to be far enough away from our leach field so that it won't interfere with that. So we've located it in what we feel like is the perfect location, and we're going to be running our gray water over there. The first thing I needed to do is to dig a deep pit in kind of a half moon shape around where the tree is going to be. We will fill this pit with rock and that'll be a place for the water from the gray water system to go. And then once it hits that rock, kind of a leach area, it'll soak into the ground. The bucket that you see there in the foreground is the location where we want to plant the tree. So I have that sitting there and I'm digging out this kind of crescent shape around it. I want to keep the rock layer, you know, a ways away from the base of the tree, but close enough that it'll still be well watered from all this gray water. This gray water system has been part of our design for the home from the beginning. In fact, I had to install a completely separate drainage system in the house to separate the gray water from the black water. And so all of the water from the showers, the bathroom sinks, and from the clothes washer go into this gray water system, and we can direct that to you know, water trees and make use of that water instead of it just going into the septic system. 
So now I've got most of this crescent dug. I'll be filling that with gravel, but I wanted to get the inlet line kind of started here. So this is the trench that'll go all the way up closer to the house to connect to where the existing gray water system comes out. So I'm just getting that started to make sure I have the elevations right. Once I'm confident of that, I decide to go ahead and start filling it with gravel. We had some extra gravel from our septic system that we had ended up spreading on the driveway. And it turns out it's really coarser than we wanted. And so I'm taking some of that extra off. I'll use it to fill this hole. And this gravel was a lot of work scraping up off the driveway. It's definitely some, some hard digging and scraping uh, gravel that's already been driven over and stuff. But it works and it's free. So we're making load after load of that. Took quite a few loads to get this area filled up. And then we decided to cover it with a landscape fabric and then put dirt on top of that. The landscape fabric will keep dirt and other debris from falling in between the rocks and filling up those little gaps in between the rocks. That's what you're really going for there is that space that'll allow the water from the gray water system to come in. It'll allow, it'll provide somewhere for that water to go until it has time to soak into the ground. I'm just digging out a small hole here as a marker for where the tree will go. Next, I'll cover up the landscape fabric with dirt to basically ground level. I will note that the size of this drainage pit was just an estimation. We think this will be plenty, and we did leave the option to extend it later if we needed to. We could make, kind of add an arm to it and extend it down to another place where we might want to have a tree. We think this will be plenty. We were observing it as it was spilling out onto the ground previously, and it always soaked in really fast. So I think this will be plenty, but I'll monitor it, and if it feels like we need more room, I can extend this pit out. Next up, I'm just marking out the path I'll take with this trench to connect what I just dug out over to the current location of the drain. We wanted to get this plenty far away from the septic, so the trench that I'm hand digging here ended up being about 65 feet long. We thought long and hard about what we wanted to water with this gray water, and in the end we decided to avoid using it to water any food producing uh, plants or trees, and so we decided to go with just a big beautiful shade tree and plant a tree that loved water and that wanted all it could get. And so I think we've got a few ideas on which variety would work good for us, and we found a good location for that. Well, a few hours later and the digging is complete, and I'm ready to start making the connection for the drain line. The gray water drain coming out of the house is a three inch pipe and it's ABS that I'm connecting to and I needed to use a short little piece of ABS before I transition to the white flexible pipe that I'm using. And so that's what I'm doing here, just cutting a length of ABS that I'll be connecting to the current pipe that's coming out and then I'll transition to the flex. This goes along pretty quick. I just need to make sure that I'm maintaining a reasonable amount of slope as I go down the line here. Now I'm transitioning to the white pipe. It's a flexible white pipe in the three inch size and it comes in 10 foot lengths. So I'm just gluing and sealing those joints up as I go. The pipe is flexible enough that it has no trouble following the curves of the trench, but it's still a thick and heavy duty material that's supposed to have a really long life. That pipe is run all the way down to the gravel pit area and I terminated it there and covered the entire thing with rock so that Small critters and stuff can't get in and crawl up in. So once that was all covered in rock, I started the backfill process. It's nice to have that done. Now we just need to find the perfect tree. Well, now that that's done, it's back to removing these small mesquite tree bushes. I'm continuing to work in our orchard area here, still trying to get all the brush cleared out. This whole area is a bit of a low spot where all of the water from our roof drains to and it's good clean water and so this will be perfect area to plant some fruit trees in. Once I get this area all cleared out we'll have plenty of room to plant some trees and we may put in a system to divert the water that comes off the house all through this area, kind of a dispersal system so that this whole area is well watered from the roof. Most of these mesquites are pretty small, but it's still a good bit of work to cut them off below ground level and put a little salt on the root to try to keep them from coming back. Mesquite trees are notoriously difficult to keep from growing back, but if they do start to come back, we can just mow them down and keep this area cleared off. We decided to leave one of the bigger mesquite trees, the one I'm working by there, in this area since they are a great nitrogen fixing tree, but we trimmed it up nice and it's kind of out of the way on one side. And here's a look at the cleared area. We decided to leave some of the non-mesquite bushes, but it's nice to have this area cleared out. 
While I was at it and in the mode of working on removing these mesquite trees, I decided to go ahead and remove some that were too close to the septic system. There's actually some on either side of the septic that are too close, actually quite a few. It's amazing how many of these small little trees there are around. And so I'm working on that here. This one is a decent sized one. You know, it doesn't look that big, but you know, all of these little branches come down to a root that's pretty substantial. My general process was to dig out around the base until, you know, I could see about a foot of the root going down into the ground. Then I would cut off all of the side roots that are branching out and going sideways. And then I would work at cutting the tap root that goes down deeper into the ground. Sometimes in order to get close enough to the tree with the shovel, I had to remove some of the branches. So I did that earlier and now I can get up close to the tree, at least on one side, in order to shovel. These trees are really hard to work around because they're so full of thorns, big nasty thorns. I'm using the ax there for a little bit to get in and cut some of those side roots off. And here I am getting in with my hands to clear the dirt out around that tap root. I used the sawzall or the reciprocating saw for a second there to do a little bit, but it wasn't enough. And so I got out my chainsaw. This is an old electric chainsaw that I've had for a long time and the chain keeps coming off. There's something wrong with it and I can only use it for just a little while before the chain comes off. This would be the perfect tool if it worked properly, but I think I'm going to have to give up on it. I'm almost through the tree though, so I put the chain back on several times in an effort to get all the way through this one last root. Well, I was able to get almost all the way through with the chainsaw before I gave up on it, enough that I could work it around, work the tree over. I laid it over on its side and I can hear it cracking and splitting. So I grabbed it with my gloves and I'm just kind of twisting it around in a circle to break off that last connection. And here it is, it finally comes loose. This is really a struggle. Every single one of these trees is a struggle to get out of the ground. They really fight you. They're just gnarly, nasty, uh, stickery trees. You get scratched and beat up. It's quite the process. Well, I got that area all cleared out and I'm moving over to the other side of the septic where I have some trees to remove as well. I have several small scrubs over there and then also one or two pretty good sized ones. I'm just stacking the leftover branches and remains of the trees off to one side to let them dry a little bit and eventually we'll mulch them. Here's one of the bigger trees that I had to take down in this area. As you can see, right at ground level, it splits off and goes into a bunch of smaller stems that come up. So I had to cut all those down just so I could get close to the root ball and start working on it here. This is quite a large root system under here. And since my chainsaw is out of commission, I had to use the ax. So I got an old double bit ax that I had and started wailing away at it. I'm just trying to chop off as much of the wood as I can and get the remains of the stump down below ground level. I finally got it down here and I'm pouring salt on it to, in hopes of keeping it from coming back. I also just generally chop the stump all up as much as I can so that the salt would go deeper into what was left of the root system. After that, I buried it and started on some of the smaller bushes. I'm almost done clearing out this area. These small ones are a whole lot easier, but I still have to dig out around them and then cut them off with a reciprocating saw below ground level. Well, just about done here. It's nice to have this finished up. In the end, I've removed probably 50 or 60 uh, small bushes or trees. These mesquite just grow thick around here. And in a five foot circle, you might have 10 trees. So anyway, there's just a bunch of them. It's nice to finally have those cleared out. One final thing that we wanted to add to our multipurpose shack was a weather station. It ended up being a nice structure that's out away from the house that we could add a pole to the top of to get the weather station sufficiently high in the air to accurately take weather measurements. There was some assembly required here, so I built it inside the house with the help of my little granddaughter, and then I went outside to mount it on the pole. This pole up on top of the building was the perfect place to mount this. It's very secure and nice and up out of the way. We did need a line of sight location to mount the home base. And so we had a clear line of sight to the bedroom window. And so we placed it on the sill in there. This weather station is something that April loves. And so this is great to get it mounted. It shows all kinds of data, wind speed and direction, rain accumulation, outdoor temperatures, all kinds of stuff. And we'll be able to track that and trend that by connecting a computer to it. So it's pretty cool. And at the end of the video, we'll give you a little example of what that looks like. After that, we decided to get back to some of the yard work and start trimming the trees and processing some of those branches. So April got out her shredder chipper here and she's processing some of the branches that we've taken off of these little trees around here. 
Our front yard is pretty nice and open. It has a large cleared area from where we put the septic in and kind of framing the yard towards the back of the yard. There are three large trees that we love. They're big, beautiful trees. They just need a little trimming to make them look nicer. I'm working on one of these trees here. It's a nice large mesquite tree and beautiful shape. It just has a lot of dead wood at the bottom of the tree. That's something that mesquites do is the lower branches kind of die off and just hang there and they don't look real great. They can look a lot neater if you trim them. So I'm basically just trimming off the dead wood that's hanging on the bottom part of the tree and just by removing that dead wood it'll make the tree look a lot nicer and cleaner. This is also a good time to be trimming on trees. If there is any living branches, it's a good time to be taking those off so the tree will have time to heal. We're also doing this because the spring is our biggest fire season around here, so it's a good time right now in the winter to be clearing away you know, dead limbs and branches and mowing down some of this grass so we remove the fire hazard from around our home. This was a really fun process. It's, it's really cool trimming these trees off and just seeing the difference as you remove those dead branches and trim it up. It, they look so nice. This is a big, gorgeous tree. Some of these mesquites really spread out at the base. I can't tell if this is just one huge tree that really branches out at the base or if it's several that just grew up right next to each other. But in any case, it's a big, gorgeous tree and it's a lot of fun to trim it up and make it look nice. As I go along here working on each tree, I'm taking the time to break down the dead branches. I'm using the larger pieces I'm saving for maybe using for grilling or something like that, and then the, I'm making a separate pile of smaller branches that I intend to come back and, and mulch later. And here April has the mower out and she's mowing down the grass around the home, just creating a fire break and cleaning out the area. Well, the front yard is really starting to look different. We've removed a lot of those small trees and brush that was too close to the septic, trimmed up our nice big trees in the back, and now with this mowing, it's looking all clean and neat. It looks like a different place. We're able to mulch all of these smaller branches, basically one inch and smaller we're able to mulch, especially if they're a little on the dry side. So we got a lot of good mulch out of this. It is a bit of a slow process with this machine. It's a, it's a pretty small electric powered machine, but you know, we're able to run it off the solar system and turn a lot of these branches into free mulch so it works great. We'll be using this mulch to put around the trees that we'll be planting. Well, after looking, we found the perfect shade tree to put in over by the gray water system, so I'm digging the hole for it here. We ended up going with an Arizona sycamore, and they had a good specimen at the local store. It's the only one they had. This may not be the best time of year to plant it. It's kind of in the middle of winter, but they had one in stock, and we decided to go ahead and plant it and maybe give it a head start on the next growing season. We'll see. The Arizona sycamore is a really cool tree. They have a beautiful white bark that's just gorgeous, and they're perfectly suited to our climate here. They're very cold hardy and uh, heat hardy. They, can, they do really well in either temperature extreme, and they love water. They'll take all the water they can get. They often grow by high desert rivers in this area, so we think it's gonna be perfect for the climate. It's gonna love water, and they grow to be a really large shade tree that can last for years and years, so hopefully this will work out good for us. We're hoping this tree does well. We gathered up some of the good topsoil from underneath the big mesquite trees to plant this tree with. We've had wonderful success with this stuff in the garden. It's really rich soil and should be the perfect thing to use to get this tree in and give it a good head start. We found it really difficult to plant trees here. Just because it gets so much colder at night here than it does in town, we can be from 15 to 20 degrees cooler than it is in town. 
So by the time we buy a tree in town, it's already starting to leaf out and then we bring it out here and it's colder and the leaves die off and it hurts the tree. So we decided that maybe planting in the winter would be better. That way the tree is dormant and it'll come out when it needs to, you know, at the right time for our climate, not the town climate. While we are in town, we also picked up a screw bean mesquite tree that we're planting on the berm of our pond and swale. Scroobean mesquite is a rare and beautiful variety of mesquite tree. The wood is just gorgeous and it's highly prized by woodworkers. Anyway, we decided we wanted to introduce this species to the property and get some growing. It's all planted. We'll see how it does. Hopefully it'll do well. Thanks for watching. If you want to follow our future projects, be sure to tap the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. Here's a quick look at some data from the weather station. This is early February, so here's just the first week that we had it out. So it has the indoor and the outdoor temperature side by side. Of course, the indoor temperature is being looked at um, here on the windowsill, so at night the curtains are closed. So it's not a very accurate inside temperature, but it's still interesting to compare it. In this stretch here, we had a couple of days where we were up into the middle 70s, and then we had three nights where we were down into the teens. So on the inside temperatures, we're seeing highs spike up into the 90s as the sun is shining through the window, and then we're getting lows down into the 60s when the curtains are closed and it's night. And here's a look at the wind speed from February 2nd until February 15th.